this tank will literally rain missiles on this $500,000 and any money that doesn't get destroyed, I'm giving it all to this artificial intelligence agent named Pogo. Luckily for me, Pogo and the money are virtual, so I won't have to sell my organs to afford this video. Luckily for him, I've sprinkled some concrete blocks across the map, which he can pick up and use to build fortifications against the tank missiles that will be fired at his money. I will be honest, I was surprised by some of Pogo's ingenuity in this episode. Pogo will have to learn what is the best way to protect the cache, and he will have to do it all by himself, using the power of reinforcement learning. Wait, wait, don't be frightened. I know it's a scary word, but the concept is quite simple. Similar to how you would train a pet, Pogo will be rewarded for doing correct actions, such as blocking Tang's path, but most importantly, he will be punished for wrong actions, such as losing money. This will incentivize our AI to choose those actions that lead to a highest reward, as simple as that. Well, technically it's also possible that too much punishment will completely break Pogo's spirit and motivation, but we don't care about that, do we? In terms of actions, beside the regular movement and rotation, Pogo can pick up a block at three different heights. This way, Pogo will be able to stack one block onto another to prevent the projectiles flying over. Lastly, he's able to see the environment around him using a set of raycasts. Long story short, raycasts are lines projected from Pogo in different directions. On collision with an object, each of those lines will return some information, such as what kind of object was hit and how far that object is from Pogo. Basically, raycasts serve as Pogo's eyes and help him navigate in the simulation. I started training on easy difficulty first, where the tank is slightly submerged into the ground, which means Pogo will only need one well-placed block in front of the tank in order to win. By the way, a win is considered when Pogo manages to secure 5 or more stacks of money. To speed up the process, I have been training 35 identical agents in parallel with a timescale of 4, which means that 1 second in real life equals 4 seconds in this simulation. So not only Pogo was getting older, hence wiser, for time faster, but he also shared the experience with 34 other clones. I'm actually planning on getting a better GPU quite soon, so I expect to be able to scale the training even more. But enough theory, let's get to the actual training. At first, he was investigating the environment, randomly stumbling around, figuring out how to move, how to pick up blocks, and the overall idea of this simulation. Until, on Route 16, Pogo managed to build this promising wall right in front of the money stacks. Unfortunately, after the first few projectiles, the tower fell, but this gave Pogo some valuable insights, because on the very next round, after a perfect throw, he eventually secured his first victory and he used only one block. That was just the beginning, and what followed was a whole series of wins, where our agent tried various strategies, which included using a single block, using multiple blocks, using towers made out of blocks, placing the blocks in a straight line, and so on. Eventually, when the win counter reached a total of 50 wins, I've decided it is enough for the basics and increased the difficulty of our simulation. Now, having a single block in front of the tank won't suffice because the projectile will simply fly over. For this level, Pogo will have to learn how to properly build towers out of the provided blocks, and that is where his creativity and ingenuity really started to show. Just few rounds after increasing the difficulty, this genius found out a way to support the blocks with his own body in such a way that the corners of the block were able to stop the projectiles. At first I assumed it was a fluke and he did that by accident, but then on round 113 he did that again. And something similar on round 116. Here, he placed a block on top of the other one and is supporting it so it doesn't fall. This kept happening over and over, but I've decided to allow it since it seems like a legit strategy, however, little did I know, it was far from his last trick. 
After a few hundred more wins, it was time to increase the difficulty once again, forcing Pogo to stack three blocks on top of each other. However, he once again found a different solution. Instead of attempting to build a three-story tower, Pogo figured out he can simply hold the block at the same height the projectiles fly. I didn't even think of that. As cool as it is coming up with this unique solution, I'm afraid we can't really consider it legit. I fixed this by making Pogo drop the block he was holding once the save time is over, but that also means I had to start the training all over from scratch. Moreover, I've changed the win criteria from 5 saved stacks of money to only 1 saved stack, in the hope it will also improve the results. Same idea, first we train on the easy difficulty where the tank is submerged into the ground, and it wasn't too long until Pogo understood the requirements and secured the 50 victories needed to advance to the next difficulty level. Here, he once again relied on the same strategy of supporting the blocks with his body instead of stacking them on top of each other. This made me think, what if that is actually the reason Pogo can't learn to properly stack blocks? So I tried positioning the tank a little higher, and now there is no way to win using a single block, since its corners won't reach the projectiles, and the only way of stopping them is stacking several blocks on top of each other. Unfortunately, no matter what I tried, round after round, Pogo failed to secure a single win. I guess I wasn't the only one upset by these results, because after several failures in a row, Pogo just gave up. He completely abandoned any attempts at securing the money, instead he preferred to go on these melancholic walks into the forest. Um, yeah... I have spent several days trying various fixes in attempts to get better results, or at least to get similar results to my first training attempts. And after about a week of trial and error, I came up with something that worked. I made it so another Pogo drops a block, it becomes locked, so he can't pick it up anymore, and it wasn't just to make his existence more miserable. My assumption was that locking some of the blocks will force our agents to interact with more blocks, resulting in larger defense structures and potential even towers. You can see that now, after dropping the block, he is correcting its position and rotation using his body, because he can't pick it up anymore. I will not bore you with the rest of this training process, but after a total of more than 200 hours spent on this project, here is the final result. We will have three attempts on the medium difficulty, and we will see what is the most amount of money Pogo will be able to secure. Pause this video right now and let me know in the comments, how many out of the 10 stacks of money will Pogo manage to save? In his first attempt, he decided to go with a simple strategy of stacking only two blocks on top of each other. It might be just enough to stop one or two projectiles, but it doesn't seem too sturdy and I think it will eventually get knocked over. Seems that Pogo realized that as well, because he attempted to reinforce it with another block, but accidentally collapsed the entire tower, leaving all of his money without protection. Yep, not a single bullet was stopped this time, but no worries, he has two more attempts. In round 2, he seems to rely on the same strategy of using only two blocks, however this time the top block is placed much better, having a higher chance to withstand the missile barrage. Also, this time Pogo decided not to risk it with a third block and just left the tower stand. Up to a good start, but on 5th projectile the tower fell, resulting in 5 money stacks being destroyed. Much better than the first try, but still lots of room for improvement. Round 3, and the strategy on the first side might feel the same, however if you look closely, you can see that now Pogo is standing right behind the tower, supporting it with his body, which I assume is intended to stop the top block from falling when projectiles hit it, like it did previous round. Alright, look at it go! It actually worked and Pogo managed to secure the entire bag. Nice! But then I thought, how would the results change if I use the same trained brain, but this time the blocks are not locked when they are dropped, allowing Pogo to rearrange them if needed. By the way, while Pogo is busy building his fort, I would like to thank my Patreon subscribers for supporting my content. Spartan King, Red Nugget, LND Place, Andre Svark and Leonard Averit. Thank you, you are the legends. Back to our little engineer, who used 5 blocks to build this beauty, but will it hold? 
Oh no! The very first project I'll push the main block away, clearing the path to the money stash and making Pogo lose 9 out of 10 stacks. Oh well, that's it for this video. But I think you might like this other video I made where I trained little Pogo to avoid his drunk AI dead. Bye!